everybody. Welcome to another episode of Just Saying with Justin Martindale. I am what? Justin Martindale. And I am very excited to bring you guys this week's episode because we have one of my dear friends and cohorts. Um, you've seen him on many a show. You've seen him. He's in the upcoming movie Bros, directed by Judd Apatow, the Billy Eichner movie. And he is, a, uh, he is an author as well. Uh, yeah. He has a book called My Life as a Goddess. Yep. Uh, 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 it's Guy Branham, everyone. Thank you. Good to be here. Also, Nick Stoller directed Bros. Judd, oh. Judd just produced. Oh, the whole time. Judd just produced. Okay. Yes. So, yes, I thought Judd but, directed see, it. See, the thing is, is I feel like if Judd had directed, I would have gotten to meet Leslie Mann by now. But I've still not gotten to meet Leslie Mann, which is kind of pissing me off. The Outrage. Outrage. <laughs> you know, how are you? I'm well. How are you? I'm good. Uh, you know, we finally broke this uh, horrifying heat wave. It is now a brisk 85 outside. <laughs> and I so, mean, it is just thick and musty out there. What did you call me? <laughs> <laughs> Never. <laughs> it is. It, like, literally... Um, it rained. Um, I know you were in, in Toronto, and we'll get into yes. that in a minute, but it rained, and I was going to ask you if you went to the Lady Gaga concert this weekend, because the entire uh, mecca of West Hollywood went, um, but it had rained the day before the concert, and by rain, I mean, like, God's raspberry. It was yes. just a, like, nothing. Yes. But it felt Are you like saying that it rained? On, on them. G -g 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 yes, exactly. And I was like, and for a minute there, I was like, only Lady Gaga can break this spell of a heat wave. Yes. But it was, it was full Tampa. <laughs> it was like, we walked outside and we were like, oh, what is this? And we we're like, oh, it's humidity. Yeah. That's what that is. It's so Awful. Gross. It was so gross. It was so hot. But... The concert was fantastic, and I'll get into the concert a little bit, but I want to hear what, uh, where were you? Because you had an interesting day. Um, I was at the Toronto International Film Festival. Exotic. <laughs> besting films. But yeah, this morning I woke up in Toronto, uh, went through v very difficult security that ended up, I missed my flight, uh, and then, you know, just the whole thing, like... As comedians, we are irresponsible people who have to get on planes all the time. True. And I love getting to an airport early so that I never have to miss a plane uh, because it terrifies me. It's me. It's my biggest fear, too. Yeah. Oh. And do you, you know Casey Lai, right? Mm hmm Casey Lai and I went to Europe together, and he was like, I don't want to go to the airport. It scares me to think about planes. And I'm like, <laughs> I don't want to be late to the airport. It scares me to think about missing planes. Right. And so there was a lot of tension there. Um, but I ended up, fucking Delta took care of me. I ended up getting into Los Angeles too hours before I was supposed to get here. My bags arrived. What do I have to complain about? Except, well, I had to, for my first flight, I had to be in coach, which isn't great for this body. Um, <laughs> but She's a comfort, she's a comfort girl. <laughs> I'm the same. I'm like, oh, move. God. Um, but it was fine. It was uh -huh. lovely. Good, good, good. Were there, did you see anything fun at the TIFF? Oh, um, I saw On the Come Up, uh, a movie that Sanal Lathan directed about a little girl who wants to become a rapper. It's really good. And then I, uh, I asked Seth Rogen to get me into the Steven Spielberg movie, The Fablemans. The Fablemans. And I got to see The Fablemans. Oh, you saw it? Yes, it was, it was Oscar like- Oscar frontrunner, they're saying. Yes, I yeah. mean, it was, it was really amazing, but also I was more just aware of the fact that uh, Seth Rogen getting me tickets to the like screening got me better seats than being in the movie did for bros. Um, and it was just like, um, can I touch Tony Kushner? But then I, I didn't touch Tony Kushner. No, I don't think anyone can. No. <laughs> but that's actually funny. That's just the magic of Disney right there. Yes. Just like Seth Rogen can be like, come to the Fablemans. And it's that, is it, is it about Steven Spielberg? It's about Steven Spielberg and it's about- His childhood, right? It's about his childhood yeah. and it is sort of like, you don't expect emotions that sort of like complex mm -hmm. or not, like not safe. Uh, it, it is a, a much more sort of like, it is a queerer story than I expected. But like, you got Tony Kushner there. Yeah. So uh, it, it better be. That kind of makes sense. But it still got the Spielberg gloss on it, which was something that while I was watching it, kind of kept me out of it. But uh, like, all day on the plane, I was thinking about it, which means oh, good. I think it was good. Yeah. And you know what? Michelle Williams just has that factor of if Michelle Williams is in a movie, I'm going to think about it for a while. Well, I mean, the thing is, it's like, truly, it is a 
big performance. Uh-huh. It is a big performance that is like um, more than a little bit influenced by Gwen Verdon. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's not the kind of performance you're used to seeing in a Spielberg movie. And it is one of those just like, um, you know, like Michelle Williams having been nominated for Academy Awards as many times as she has is like, she's only trying to hit dingers. You know, yeah. she's only yes. trying to hit home runs. Yeah. And she goes for it. And so afterwards, my friend Luke, who like went to Juilliard and is a fancy actor, I was like, is that good? Because I thought it was very good, but I could be wrong. Yeah. <laughs> Michelle, like Busy Phillips at this point is like, can you win if I go next time? <laughs> like, like, can, please. I mean, I can't wait. And I mean, that it, the whole the whole festival, the whole rundown looks amazing. I'm ready for some fall winter movies. Well, I did not realize, I did not realize Harry Styles was going to be there. I did not realize. Realize did all you of see him? the fancies. No, but they were just like teens screaming all the time. And it was like, <laughs> I should have pushed my way through. I could have seen him in his wide legged green pants. Oh, uh, I know. See, you were at Harry Styles. I saw um, 30 and 40 year old uh, gays screaming. And that was at Lady Gaga, which, <laughs> which it was good. Yes, it was good. Um, I like a man who's had the time for the steroids to do their work. Thank you, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, it was, it was fine. Everybody was there. I kept, I kept hearing like my name, which was weird because I think I stand out and I heard yeah. like Joseph Ardell, and I'm like, I don't want to look back. It's weird and like it's too many, a lot of people, not a mask. So I was, you know, I'm adapting into society, Dodger Stadium, which was great. I think that was actually my first time ever at Dodger Stadium. Oh, really? Uh Uh-huh. Baseball games are fun. I don't care about baseball, but baseball games are fun. I like to see them live, not televised. I would also like to say I hate live music experiences, but there comes a point in time when an act is so appealing to the gay male audience that it stops being a live music experience Mm -hmm. and becomes a faggot shit show. Oh. And so I'll go to a Robin concert. Like, I think a Lady Gaga concert would be a delight because you're just constantly running into people. It was it was definitely not a, a faggot shit show, but it was it was borderline because yeah. at the same time we know Lady Gaga as say a, you know, uh, uh an Oscar winning uh songwriter. Mm-hmm. Uh she performed with Tony Bennett. Yes. So she's got that like she's done a residency. Uh-huh. It's not like blah, blah. You know, I'm not- <laughs> she loves to sit at a piano. Yeah, it's not like a Kim Petra slut pop. You know, like we're gonna get yes. vocals, we're gonna get performance. And yes. I'm not shading Kim Petra. I'm just saying this isn't like a performance at like, uh, you know, high tops on Santa yes. Monica. This is like Dodger Stadium performance. Like, she did the first opening number. Like, she started like a forty-five. Not everyone is seated yet. Yeah. And she started with like her hits, like Bad Romance and oh, shit. Really? Cuz we've seen it. Like yeah. so she's like if you're going to miss the beginning like, you know. Yeah. And then went into like all of it. It was great. I loved it. There was fire. There was <laughs> it was the hottest fucking night temperature wise. Yeah. At one point I um I took my shirt off. <laughs> I took my shirt off cuz I was soaking wet. It was so hot. And uh, yeah, it was just a great performance. And she's, I forgot how kind of a nerd she is, yeah. but like in a good way, like a quirky nerd. Right. Like she's just, she says things like, I see you. <laughs> Did you hear me? We're all perfect. <laughs> and you're like, okay. I mean, the thing is, that woman was built to be in her 40s. Uh-huh. I, um, and the thing is, is she's kind of done some of her 40s already a couple of times. Mm-hmm. The Tony Bennett era. Um, yeah. Joanne. And yes, and I think she will probably be, uh, give us poppy fun when she is older, just like Cher has done for us. But there is a way that like, she and Lin-Manuel Miranda are going to do something together in their mid-50s. And it's going to be wonderful. Oh my God. <laughs> I hope it's in Canto Live. <laughs> Encanto is a powerful movie about the importance of lesbian ants. If you've learned anything from this podcast, the brief time that we've been recording, Encanto is about lesbian ants. It's true. It is. It's very true. Yeah. I mean... Nobody there is marrying a man except for that one cousin who can yeah. hear everything. And like a strong, a strong um, Latin aunt, lesbian yes. Latin aunt. No, we no. don't talk about Bruno. <laughs> no, no, no. That's the thing. My big theory about my mm-hmm. big theory about it is that like the the thing that upsets the story are 
queer children mm-hmm. who don't have children who the mom gets mad at, like the grandma gets mad at them for not making children and keeping the thing going. The lineage, yeah. Failing to realize <laughs> that like Bruno and all of these, you know, the big strong dyke and the flower dyke uh. and the, the dyke without powers, like they're- not the dyke without powers. <laughs> but her power is the house. Yes, she, yes, yes, because she's the only one who can keep that home together. Yes, mm-hmm. and the thing is, is what it's saying is sometimes you need like a busy a bitchy gossipy gay uncle true and uh a lesbian aunt who is always just taking care of the house and cooking mm-hmm. to raise a new generation of people yeah <laughs> it's a beautiful film <laughs> Wow, they did not explain this at the Disney 23 Expo, <laughs> which, <laughs> whew, did I, you see any of that? I, I mean, I saw only corners of it. It was truly amazing, like a whole bunch of new rides that were coming out, and then I was just seeing photos of the people who, oh, my my friend was there doing work, and she like had Angela Bassett and Sigourney Weaver photos. Oh my God. It was very exciting. Well, I mean, it was it was pretty epic, because, you know, they're, they're saying like all the movies they're doing, they're doing like a Mufasa prequel, sure. Mm-hmm. Because I think that's what we need to do is, you know, I think we need to thirst over lions again. I have this weird, because I thought Mufasa was kind of hot. I had a weird thing, like Beast and Beauty and the Beast, I thought was kind of hot. It's weird, I know. But I think that was like me as like a young queer kid being like, daddy, you know. Look, I definitely understand finding animals, cartoon animals, hot. (laughs) Yeah. I don't think that I was a Mufasa man. I think really the erotic center of of Lion King is Nala. Um, Right. Uh, but cartoon Nala where she's on her back looking at everyone and like, yes. like come hither eyes. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. I mean, I don't know who I would go to for a uh, male cartoon animal. Maybe someone in the Robin Hood, except none of them are really my t- I like that Robin Hood is bad and will be manipulative towards you, but flirt <laughs> with you to keep control of you. Oh, okay. You've thought of this. Yes. <laughs> I thought uh, we're uh, there's you know Mufasa prequel. I'm like sure, uh-huh. and then the big one was the Little Mermaid. Yes, I saw the clip from Little Mermaid. What did you? Th- the, what the Little Mermaid? I not was mermaid. <laughs> I, I was I was electrified. I was electrified by the vocals. Oh, and then I don't think about visuals. And then afterwards, people were saying that it looked murky. Murky? Uh, yeah, like the ocean. Right, but I think <laughs> I mean it's so hard because like. The original animation is so brightly colored mm-hmm. and it's so iconic. I kind of get that. The whole time I was watching it, I was just like, but is under the sea going to be pretty? Right. See, I was the same way. John, however, you thought it was terrifying. Oh, really? Yeah. He said it was like a full horror movie. Oh, he doesn't like a run. Like a. Oh, oh. Out of the sea, wish I could be. You don't like that? That's 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 our gay language. <laughs> okay, so hashtag not your mermaid. Are you one of those people? <laughs> Which that was all over Twitter. Did you see that? Yeah. Good God. I mean, it, it's just like. How many white aerials do we need? Like, we've already done this many times. Yeah. Um, And have you actually seen the mythological mer creature? No. Well, first of all, I said mythological because they're not real. Right. And it's kind of like... It's kind of like when the new House of the Dragon came out, or as I called it, Dragonheart a couple weeks ago. (laughs) um, People were like, the dragons look fake. And I'm like, because dragons Dragons. are not real. (laughs) They're going to look fake because they do not exist. I think, I think it's going to be amazing. I loved watching the TikToks of all the little like little girls of color like watching it for the first time and yes. losing it. I was like, oh, my strings in my heart. Like, I, I mean, I did not think about that. I liked watching a nice four year old sing "Let It Go" uh-huh. so bad. Uh-huh. The, once they get six, they start thinking they're good, and I don't want to look at that anymore. Right, right. But when they're just selling it, and I hadn't thought about the fact that we're going to get a whole generation of children discovering like the songs of Howard Ashman and like yeah and letting like it destroy and them that's what I'm and I'm I'm here for it I do agree on the murkiness you know what I kind of got offended at what the bubbles oh. I wanted bubbles <laughs> Remember all the bubbles in the in the original? Yeah, just like but well, there's just and there's so much movement in yeah. the original one, and yeah. I think that that's it's <clears throat> like a really hard challenge for what they're trying to do. And I just thought it would actually be funny too if she was just singing. It was just like, 
<laughs> That's the whole movie. <laughs> but I mean, we still haven't gotten a look at Daddy Triton yet. I mean, do you think Melissa McCarthy has what it takes to be able to kill those songs? I'm going to answer this really quickly. No. Oh, really? I don't think so. Yeah. I really want to, and I'm staying optimistic about this, but I do not think... I remember when they announced the casting of her, and I was just kind of like, Ugh. I'm worried. And it's like Pat Carroll, who did the job originally. Yes. R.I.P. Like, was just like a sitcom actress. Yeah. But back then, everybody had a background in vaudeville and real entertainment and could, like, do everything. Yeah. And I just think, I mean, if Beanie taught us anything, <laughs> it is, you know, take on an assignment that you can do well at. Yeah, yeah. I think they're just kind of like, well, she looks like she could play the part. Yeah. But, you know... I'm, I I wanted a Lizzo. I remember yes. when Lizzo was like campaigning. I mean, that was so lovely. Yeah. She wanted the job so bad, and we knew that she would be able to give us the song. Yeah. And the thing is, is like Melissa McCarthy will be able to give you the funny, but like we're doubting that from Lizzo. You yeah. Know? I, exactly. I was like, okay, Melissa McCarthy, and like no one's pissed off about that. No, everybody what, loves there's Melissa a white McCarthy. woman playing a purple <laughs> sea witch. How dare she? Yeah. I believe <laughs> that Ursula started soft butch i think that ursula's haircut was a bold step forward for like uh non-gender conforming women to mm -hmm. be able to have flair but in a non-femme way the, the first the first rachel maddow really yes it was a woman it was a woman with a no-nonsense attitude yes um i'm excited for triton i'm excited for um uh, aquafina as scuttle I don't oh. know. We'll see. I mean, that's fun. It's fun. Yeah. And she's got the voice for it, for yeah. sure. And then the little kid from Room is Flounder. Oh. Yeah. I mean, I... I think that's right, we should, yeah. We should only use child actors so many times. Yeah. He was very good in the first couple of things, but I feel like Jacob Tremblay knows the business too well. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, I would say what, at the point in time when a child under 10 can identify a managing partner of CAA, we should just... Take them to Kansas and let them learn algebra for a while. Yes, yes. School them. Yeah. School them in the cornfields. Yes. Yes. And then let them become children of the corn, actually. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I mean, that was, I'm very excited. I wanted to hear your take on it because everyone was like losing their mind. And uh, I, I can't wait. It was, everyone's been waiting for this preview of the little mermaid well um, but it is like the d23 thing because were they also doing like wakanda stuff why was um angela bassett there why why not <laughs> yeah i mean no, she was yeah. absolutely but it's like the fact that disney has marvel now and star wars the and simpsons they have everything yeah and it, having a like little festival where we check in on them is just sort of oh so you're going to tell me entertainment news yeah i mean it was sort of like netflix is a joke was a comedy festival that was just like <laughs> here's all of comedy all of comedy lives in los angeles why don't you come watch all of comedy i'm very sensitive about that because someone was not asked <laughs> we were on a show together when we were in that we we're on that brunch show Dude, didn't didn't you also you shot a special? I shot a special here. Yes. Wait, what brunch show? We weren't on a brunch show, oh, guy. We weren't. No, that was oh. a different guy with great cheekbones and highlights. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's funny too because we get into that part where we're like, "You were there." No, no. it's very. Are you talking about Al Alaska and a Reese's show? Yes. No, it wasn't there. Oh, it's okay. <laughs> Next year, <laughs> hopefully, hopefully someone. I mean, remembers at, me. At least then, maybe someone I was mistaking you for was a drag queen or a trans lady, in which case what I'm saying is, <laughs> what beautiful cheekbones, what a narrow waist. You are Thank cinched you. to the gods. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> oh, I will take that as a compliment. Speaking of a uh, trans woman with great cheekbones, <laughs> Queen Elizabeth II passed away this past weekend. Um, and you, like, like... I feel like I immediately went to you because I feel like you're very educated. You're like one of the smartest people I've ever known. Very great vocabulary. You're very sweet. Great wit. Great wit. And the nation like stopped and I was very confused. I had always said when she dies, I will take the day off work. And you did. I did not take the day Damn off it. work. Okay. Um, I was well. The thing is, is like the next day I needed to leave early, mm -hmm. and so I couldn't take the day off work for the fucking queen. Um, but yeah, <laughs> I was like. 
really sad because I thought she was great and she was amazing. But I was in Toronto, and so Scott Thompson, the I ended, Commonwealth, I got to I got to hang out with Scott Thompson, uh-huh. the, oh great, one of the most iconic performers mm-hmm. of the Queen, mm-hmm. um, but also somebody just full of opinions about her and Meghan Markle, uh, and it was all great. But like. She was she was a pro. Mm-hmm. It's like Johnny leaving the Tonight Show. You know, like it's gonna be rough for a while. And it is weird too because we all knew this was coming. She's ninety six years old, yeah. but I have thoughts. Okay, and I had to get these off my chest, and I'm not trying to be offensive, but here they are. Mm-hmm. I am um, forming a conspiracy theory group. Okay, called Queen and On. Uh huh. <laughs> I feel like she was fine a couple days. She was working until two days before. I know. And then all of a sudden her hand turned blue and everyone was like, what's up with her blue hand? And then she shook the new prime minister whose name is Liz. It's always a Liz who's up to no good. And she shook Liz's hand and then the next day she died. Okay. Mm -hmm. I really like this theory because the thing is, is like... I'm obsessed with, my conspiracy theory is, like, Liz Truss famously cheated on her husband with a guy who was her superior in parliament. Okay. um, Like, 10 years ago. And we all know that Charles can't keep it inside of his marriage. And so, this brand new prime minister, this brand new king, they're in their little royal audiences. Sexual tension is going to happen. The idea that the two of them conspired to kill the queen so that they could rule the country together makes a lot of sense to me. That's what I'm saying too, because I feel like in the middle of the night, Queen Elizabeth II, she's 96, she's not gonna put up a fight. I feel like Charles grabbed a corgi and just put it over her face (laughs) in the middle of the night and was like, shh, go to bed with his fucking sausage fingers. Have you seen the fingers? No, it's so scary. It's It's so, so what is that, gout? I mean, this is a human being who's like, is he drinking so much? Like, is his heart not pumping properly to get the fluid out of there? Yeah, his fingers look like, like me on a two-hour hike. <laughs> like, it's just too much. I mean, there, there are also some pretty choice photos of his feet Mm-mm. looking just as swollen. I, I do not like to look at it. No. But I'm like, he needs to come to California and, like, go to, like, do some Pilates, Equinox, stretch lab. Yeah. yeah. A, like a training mate. Exactly. Something. Take a Runyon selfie. Really think about his minerals. Mm-hmm. Get an alkaline water fix or something. Go to um, Earth Bar. You know, <laughs> to- <laughs> um, do do we think that the the King of the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland might be a little acidic? Do we think uh-huh. that his gut bacteria might be off? I mean, I think he definitely has gut bacteria. I mean, her name oh. is Camilla, by the way. <laughs> Don't call her gut bacteria, okay? So, you know, he is famous for liking weird stuff. Like, he apparently was convinced that coffee enemas could cure cancer for, like, a period of time in his, like, 60s. Well, I'm so glad this man is taking the reins. Exactly. It's very strange, and I don't like the idea. There's a lot happening mm-hmm. because everyone's changed their titles. And that's the thing I was talking about with friends this past weekend. I was like, we've only known of Queen Elizabeth. Yeah. I mean, she ruled for 70 years, yeah. you know? Yeah. So it's like she's outlived everybody. Right. You know who she did not live? The Queen of the United States, Betty White. So we win, UK. <laughs> we win. Um, but yeah, it was, it's weird. Like all of a sudden she's not there. We knew this was going to happen. She's 96. You can't be like, oh no, you know, but it is sad. But I get it. But it is just sort of like, she's the only <clears throat> monarch that they've had essentially during the age of TV. Yeah. Like nobody else has ever had to do it. Like all of their money was cute for a really long time. <laughs> cute and, money. <laughs> and now like they're going to have to have Charles on their money. Oh no, I forgot about that. It's rough. Oh, not, not. Charles money. Yes. Uh, And it's like also, I mean, the worst part of this is like knowing when they have to end the crown, you know, like that's when I was over. That's when I was out because they were like the filming of the crown has been put on hold. I was like, absolutely not. (laughs) But then I was finding like the joy in like how ridiculous social media and like, you know, everybody wants to have a say about anything yes. but like the cast of Hamilton was like we really are saddened by th-. and I'm like and some lady was like do you know what your play's about <laughs> oh well no the, I saw Hamilton in London uh-huh. and it, it's it's like a block and a half from Buckingham Palace and I was like this is so weird to like every night yeah like twice on Wednesdays and Sundays be um <laughs> you know uh tearing apart that lady's <laughs> ancestor um 
But also, like, truly, everyone doesn't need you to apologize for everything or express your condolences for everything. Yeah, I mean, and now we're in this, like, weird, like, pomp parade where her body's just being dragged around. No, it's wonderful. You I, like it. I love it. I mean, her having to be covered in the flag of Scotland because uh-huh. she's in Scotland. Uh-huh. I got to find out that the Duke of Hamilton is hot. Oh, but, really? Because he is the hereditary caretaker of Holyrood Palace and had to be the person to put the Scottish crown on top of her, Work. her casket. John, can we? are you there? Can you Google the Duke of Hamilton real quick? Okay. Just real quick. <laughs> I want to see him. I mean, he's probably short. Okay. But he does have a snatched little waist that he is frequently showing off with a kilt. Um, and and what else? How old is he? He's 40. Okay. Oh. I mean, like, he's a little, he's a little British about the face. Yeah. He looks like a, um, he looks like a, uh, 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 like Voldemort's friend at Hogwarts, <laughs> like 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 yeah, Tom Riddle's like nemesis or something. Okay, I, I see. I, I would say he could survive at the West Hollywood Tender Greens if he were good at his job. Like he's not surviving at West Hollywood Tender Greens just off the smile. He looks like someone that wants to talk about crypto. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He he's like, yeah. He's definitely like one of those like like. He could be in one of those like Mormon themed porns as yes. well. Uh, yes. Yeah. What is that called? Mormon.com or something? I don't know. I don't know either. I don't. It's the, 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 like the, the long underwear just throws me off every time. I mean, I'm excited that people are getting erotic pleasure from, from Mormons. Like, no, from like religious stuff. Oh, okay. Fucking around with that kind of stuff. I like, I like when people have a kink, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah, I'm I'm always like, good for you. Yeah. Well, I mean, I mean, I think this, and this is for some people, this is like the ultimate kink because we're getting like a like a a, a, the power is moving. We have a new princess of Wales where everyone's like, okay, go what what? Oh, just uh, about the eroticism of it. My first thought was, did he and Camilla fuck in his mom's bed? Absolutely. The first night that they like got to be you know, in the the king's chamber. I thought about that too. Is that weird? I mean, it seems like it would be so weird to be like, this is where my parents fucked. But there's also (laughs) something so weird about everything that they do. You mean like the incest and the the colonization? Yes. I, the, it's so bizarre. The funniest thing is like all of the islands in the Caribbean that are just like tastefully trying to get in line to be like, get us the fuck out of here. Oh, they want to be done with it. Yeah. Huh? And they can't because well, Charles is in charge. No I, pun intended. I mean, the thing is, they're going to get rid of him in the next couple of years. And I think some of them will keep them. Uh, uh, here's I want it. I'm ready for uh, William. Uh, no. I want, Right? Absolutely. The thing is, is in the Netherlands, they fucking just retire. The Netherlands had three queens in a row. They each ruled for 38 years. And then we're just like, I'm done and went off and like ate cheese. Yeah. And, oh, God, the life. Yes. And it's like, why not just do that? Also, you took the throne at 74. Right. Do six years and then just be like, Peace. Also, he truly does not want to be doing this job. Like every time he said to speak, that guy has gotten to just sort of like run his little farm and uh, make, uh, make his little biscuits uh, um, for the past 50 years. He's fucking the lady that he likes. He gets to drink as much wine as he wants to. And I just think that having to spend the rest of his life like being official mm-hmm. um, and shaking hands with poor people is not, not what this it. guy wants. He doesn't want it. William will do it. Yes. And okay, so what are your thoughts on uh, the whole Harry and Meghan and all that? Here's the thing. Go for it. Do I think she, she Meghan Markle is an extremely calculating person who uh, like first manipulated Toronto into letting her be the queen of it and then manipulated Harry into marrying her 100%. Do I also think she's smart and amazing and great and ultimately right? Absolutely. Yeah. Like, I mean, just how abjectly racist and aggressive they have been towards her and the couple since all of this went down, that he did not call them by their titles when he did his first official address. Who, Charles? Yes, he called them Meghan and Harry instead of the Duke and Duchess of Sussex. Um, And it it just really shows how much that is an institution that needs to mature. Uh, But it makes me sad because I thought 
like Harry and William were the, the best of friends, and I don't. I like did that too. They're not friends anymore. You don't think they're friends at all? I don't know. Kate hates her, right? Like Kate a hundred percent hates her. Oh, and because the thing is, is like. Kate's real good at her job as well. Yeah. Let's not pretend that Kate didn't fucking like manage and scheme her way. She uh, enlisted in that school the minute she knew he was I mean, going to that boarding school they, or whatever. They famously called her Weighty Katie because he they broke up a bunch of times and mm-hmm. she just sort of like hung around. Like, look, she's gonna get to be queen consort of the United Kingdom. Good for her. And she's gonna be a good queen consort. But she d- truly does understand that Meghan Markle is the only person who can fuck with her, and Meghan Markle can really fuck with her. <gasps> but when do we get that Meghan? I mean, when do we get the renaissance of Meghan Markle? I think, <laughs> I think like things will maybe quiet down for like four years, and then there's going to be a real rough run of something, of something going on, or possibly Meghan is just able to build enough of a media empire here that mm-hmm. it is is the life that they left behind is laughable. Mm-hmm. Wow. Okay. Good to know. What about, okay. Will you be tuning into the funeral, which is weird to say. Absolutely. Okay. I, mean, I <laughs> like, love, I love all of those rituals and yeah, all, all those uh, rituals. And it's so, it's so funny. We had like a run of weddings in the eighties and then we've had just nothing but funerals since, well, no, I guess we had, we've had some good weddings. Never mind. I have yeah. a question for you. Yeah. Would you want a cursed diamond? If someone gave you a tiara, a brooch say with just an enormous multi-million dollar diamond that you also knew was cursed by the people of India from which it was stolen. Would you keep it around or would you give it back? Or I'd would... keep it. Yes, Was of that course. too quick of an answer? No. Okay. It's, <laughs> it's honesty. I would full on put it in a clear box a la Annabelle. Yes. And like put it down in my cursed room. Okay. I don't have like a <laughs> this cursed is a... room, but it's where all my artifacts that are cursed would be. Yes. The, okay. My next question does not relate to the royal family at all. But okay. It's just me wanting to know this about you. Let's say someone came to you okay. with just a real nice full length mink coat. Okay. You don't know when it's from. It could have been made in 1970. It could have been made in 2005. And they're just like, Justin, I don't know what I'm going to do with this coat. Do you want it? Mm-hmm. Would you take it? Um, yes, if it's a gift. I don't want to be rude. Yes. Um, and it's real mink. I can't yes. ask if it's real or not. It's 100% real mink. But That's I could also point. pass it to a friend for a like a like a white elephant Christmas gift, right? W- would you wear it? No, 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 no. Really? I don't know. I don't think I look good in mink. I think, like... I mean, if I was going for, like, a Halston vibe, like, maybe. Yes. But, like, not, like... like L.A. mink coat? I mean, no. in Los Angeles, it is useless. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. But then I'd have to deal with, like, protesters and, like, you know, PETA. But also, you could be, you, like, you could really just destroy a burning man. That's like, true. They'd have all of their ugly fake furs, and you'd be like, look at me. I'm a doctor's wife. Just me and Moshe Kasher in, <laughs> in mink. Yes. Oh, n- oh, Natasha would never forgive me. <laughs> She's like, you are mink to burning man? Oh. One time I wrote a run of like seven jokes that were about owning furs and Mm -hmm. I was like, this is useless to me. And so I just sent them to Natasha and she did a couple of them in her act for a while. But now I don't think you're allowed to say most of those things. Isn't that weird? I mean, God, it's, it's, it's. Why did you ask me the fur question? Oh, just because of because you like leaped TS with the diamond, the cursed yeah. diamond, and I was like, let's make this a realer question so I get to see into Justin's soul. Yeah. I'm... <laughs> wow. Who knew? I felt like that was my Disney twenty three expo. It's like Justin Marndale and the cursed diamond, like Percy Jackson and the fucking whatever they are, the Aquanauts. Or... It's a solid pitch. Uh, all right. Well, let's get into. I mean, this past week, past weekend was nine eleven. And uh, it was the 21st anniversary, which is bonkers to me. Yeah, truly. Um, and we're not making a joke about 9-11. I think it's awful. I still, to this day, every like will know forever where I am. However, I did go to a restaurant the other day, or actually yesterday, which was 9-11. And there was like two little gay boys there like having like margaritas and stuff. And I was like, they were probably like one or two. Yeah. And they don't. That's no. re- that's really rough. Those people for whom like nine eleven is just like a concept. Yeah, the way that I was always like like the Kennedy assassination was just like right. I, we were I, yes. I, I don't I, know Pearl Harbor. You you don't got, know. You guys talk about this a yeah. lot, but I don't know. I know. So and it's weird because you know I, I feel like 
it's a, it was a terrible time in this nation's history for sure, but there's been a lot of terrible times in this nation's history. But what I am just still amazed at mm -hmm. is the amount of tone deafness <laughs> in <laughs> this country. Yes. Now, the reason I pulled this story up just because it this was a Virginia restaurant, so get ready. Uh-huh. Um, they wanted to commemorate 9-11 the best way they know how. Uh, this place in Virginia was called the Clubhouse. Uh, it's a country club in Virginia, mm -hmm. so I'm sure it's very pa patriotic. <laughs> um, and they have and Patriot I'm, I'm Day. I'm sure it only lets patriotic people in. <laughs> only, you have to be the most patriotic person to come into the patriotic country club. Yes. Um, and they posted a Patriot Day 2022 Seafood Sunday menu. Um and ABC affiliates were quick to see it because it was uh, meant to be the daily menu for 9-11 on 2022. The deleted menu included dishes like first responder flatbread. Oh, wow. And a never forget sampler, which had <laughs> items including two cups of 2977 chowder, flight 93 redirect crab dip, and two remember teeny cocktails. <laughs> no, are you serious? Oh, flight 93 crab dip? <laughs> I mean, it's awful, but at the same time, I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? See, here's the menu. I mean, they have Pentagon pie. <laughs> the thing is, I mean, and this is like Virginia, close to where people yeah. actually experience this. Yes. Yep. Um, I remember I mean, teeny. 9-11 oysters with chipotle ramelade. Okay, I mean, well, that sounds delicious. And uh, The thing is, is, you don't call the oysters 9-11 because truly if... Anything is going to bring the internal structure crashing down. Yeah. It's going to be oysters. It really is. Because if, well, okay, good. September does have an R in it. So, I mean, I think that's okay if you can have oysters if there's an R in it. Well, I mean, on a corollary point, I was going to say, I think you should only be allowed to be patriotic in this country during the months when strawberries, raspberries, and blueberries are good enough that you can make a sheet cake and put uh, whipped cream frosting on it and then make an American flag. Like, uh, and by this time of year, we're more into peach season. I, I know. think you should really just let go of uh, your patriotism and get ready for pumpkin spice. God, it's already here. Mm -hmm. I'm not ready for it though. But this, they they went on to like ruin this restaurant. I don't even know if they're like allowed I mean, I'm sure they just got like a slap on the wrist and they're like, this is a terrible idea, you well, know, obviously. Who are the people who are going to this place? And also, uh, like, I don't trust their judgment with advertising. Why would I trust their judgment for cooking clams? That's what, it, thank you. Thank you. That's exactly, these people probably like fireworks in their bare hands. Yes. Um, John was even quick to say, like, where is the PR person to be like, hey, you know what? Maybe this isn't a great idea. I mean, it's also possible that in places where your menu is laminated, you don't have a PR person. <laughs> but here's the thing. I love a laminated menu. I still yes. can't get into QR codes. I mean, it's very annoying. <laughs> uh, I had a question. Did you ever do the club in Naples that has very good seafood? No. Oh, it's real bad. Uh, I think the shows are at 6 and 7.30. Oh. Um, mm. So it is truly just people in their 90s yes. who are there for good seafood. The and, cast of Cocoon. Yes, yes, not entertainment. Oh, God. I mean, this, but this also reminded me, there was a commercial that came out in 2016 from my hometown of San Antonio, Texas, okay. which kind of went viral, and it was a mattress store. Uh, Texas Mattress really, Realtor, they did a Twin Towers sales ad, and here's a little bit of it. What better way to remember 9 11 than with a Twin Tower sale? Right now, you can get any size mattress for a twin price. Store wide sale all day long. No! Oh my God. We'll never forget. No. Uh, uh, anyway, anyway. And Chris Cuomo, who used to have an amazing show. Uh, I mean, I mean, yeah. Chris Cuomo's real hot. Yeah. Um, though a bad person without journalistic integrity, I guess. Um, I thought it was only going to be okay for them to have a Twin Towers um, ad if it was like, watch our prices come crashing down. Oh, my God. Or something like that. Yeah. That was so sweet while at the same time being very tone deaf about the the death of thousands. Thousands? Yeah. To sell mattresses and seafood. But selling mattresses in the fall is important. <laughs> like, 
I they would always like I there are always those things where they have like back to school specials and I'm like that's not related to school. Uh, Why am I buying a mattress? But it's like we need to do that. Also President's Day, we need to sell mattresses. Yes, I love a good President's Day sale. Yeah. Oh, by the way, did you hear the Queen? Uh, do we know who's invited to the funeral? I think they said Biden and Dr. Jill, and nobody else is going because everyone in the world wants a ticket to this. Who's Dr. Jill? Dr. Jill Biden, our first lady. Oh, Dr. Jill Biden. <laughs> yes. I knew that. Yeah. I just haven't heard her being called Dr. Jill. Yeah. Because I'm like, oh, does she know Dr. Phil? <laughs> is that like, is that like, is he He-Man and she's She-Ra? Like, I, would, I would let her solve uh, a lot more of my problems than his. Yeah. So Obama has to be going with Michelle, right? No. Uh, I mean, you would think you that would they think. would get the Trump's offer. Trump's not going. Trump's not going. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think. Well, you heard that he said... Um, the queen knighted him in secret. Oh, <laughs> well, yes. excuse me. <laughs> it was, I mean, it is truly amazing that <laughs> our country has been brought to its knees by like a lying fourth grader. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. And it, it continues. It continues. Never gets in, never gets put in the corner or timeout. We just keep buying it. Oh, yeah. But yeah. I'm going to say we're going to, we're going to switch topics because. People leave reviews saying, this podcast was great until you got too political. Stick to being funny. Okay. So that's what I'm going to do. Um, I want to talk about Bros. Yes. Uh, which is gay. Bros is a major motion picture. <laughs> yes. It's coming out in theaters. It's a romantic comedy um, about two guys. It's mm -hmm. the first time a studio, like a, a, a major studio, has um, released a romantic comedy uh, like about a gay person that starred a gay person. And also he wrote it. Uh, yeah. It's Billy Eichner, who I used to work for on Billy on the Street. Did you ever contribute to Billy on the Street? Did I do what? Did you ever contribute to Billy on the Street? No, 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 we no. We used no. to have like writers who just like stayed in LA and sent stuff in. Mm -hmm. And it's one of those things like Fashion Police that like nearly all gay writers and that's where I met you. I think. Yeah, I think. Well, yeah, because yes. I remember like my first assignment was like, here's the Met Gala. I was yes. like, Jesus Christ. <laughs> no, I mean <laughs> writing jokes about yellow for an entire yes. night. Yes. Um, but uh, yeah, so Bros, um, I'm in the movie and I'm a co-producer on the movie. It was written nice. by Billy Eichner and Nick Stoller and it was directed by Nick Stoller and it was produced by Judd Apatow and it's getting very good reviews. Yeah. And, um, comes out September 30th. Comes out September 30th. So please go to your local theater and watch it. And it's also like um, a lot of people don't go to theater so much anymore and we go for like spectacle -y stuff but don't necessarily understand why you would go for a comedy. But it's like, where did you see Bridesmaids? Did you see it in a theater? Do you remember? Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, I just saw sort of, Bridesmaids in a theater. Yeah, I just like missed that experience. Yeah, with, and it was like really nice. On um, Friday, we premiered the movie in Toronto, and like there was an audience of a thousand, and just sort of hearing people laugh at jokes was Good. it was lovely. Did it get a thirty-minute standing ovation? No, we are not the whale. God, oh, um, the whale. <laughs> He's going to get Best Actor. He's 100% going to get Best Actor, yeah. and it kills me so much. Why? Um, because <clears throat> uh, that, that, <laughs> that, that play, the play that it is based on is just sort of, oh, this sad, fat, gay guy is so sad and fat and gay. Oh, he's gay in the movie? Oh, he's gay. I didn't, girl, I didn't know we got a, is that the new animal in the gay kingdom? Yes. We have bears, <laughs> otters, and whales, whales. now. Okay. The whales are um, online English professors who are e have chosen to eat themselves to death because of Mormonism and their boyfriend. Um, and, Which is a new Pornhub category. <laughs> and I just, I hate fat suits, especially a fat suit in like some sort of, I mean, look, if you need it to have Big Mama's house, sure. <laughs> but in a prestige, you know, um, Venice Film Festival Oscars-y kind of movie to put somebody in a bunch of prosthetics. I thought he gained like 600 pounds for it. No, I mean, he is bigger now than he was before, uh -huh. but he like... um yeah, he wore a fat suit and all of the all of the reviews because it is a person in a fat suit just feels so comfortable like, the grotesqueness of his oh, dripping mm -hmm. body. And it's just sort of like the new the, monster. Yeah, yeah, and it's like look how gross they are. Give them the awards. It it helps it like it really is helpful if you have an actual fat person doing something. It gives it a humanity that you don't get when you have somebody uh, in a fat suit, but I'm also sort of like what happens? Well, first of all, what happens if I go and I watch it and I love it? But the second of all the uh, the play and the movie start with him uh, Almost masturbating himself to death. What does that mean? I mean, uh, I what I remember myself in the pandemic <laughs> 
But how, how did, what did he's he do? He's so fat. Oh, gross. That oh. he cannot masturbate without his heart exploding. <laughs> And I'm like, that's so dumb. I truly come in left and right. Uh-huh. And the ticker does fine, <laughs> despite me being very fat. But now, every time that I masturbate, I'm like, guy, if you have a heart attack while masturbating. You're going to be that bitch. Like, it's going to real egg on your face. You said this didn't happen, and it happens. Yep, yep. And then you're like, well, guy, he had a good run. <laughs> But did, did you hear how he really went? Oh, no. I don't he know. bewailed himself. <laughs> His blowhole killed him. <laughs> I, I mean, I'm interested in it. I do like a good Brendan Fraser comeback. Yes, absolutely. We all want that. I do, but like it really, I did get a little teary eyed when you know everyone's like, "Oh, brave." Yeah, it's <laughs> so brave, and he's like, "I was trying to leave," and he's like, "Well, I guess I have to stay." I mean, what's funny <clears throat> is we've, we've never really had sort of like a, a marquee male actor who's like acting like a um, a frightened antelope. Mm. Like he's always like, what's going on, huh? Yeah. I'm just a little Brendan Fraser. Yeah. And it's like, we're sort of used to those ladies who are like, don't quite know where they are and <sighs> seem like, you know, under a spell all the time. Uh, but it's nice to have a man doing that. Yeah, I like a confused male. I'm, it's time, mm-hmm. but go. Bo- let's let's talk a little bit more about uh, uh, bros. Like, so what? Who do you play? Can you can you give us anything? I or? play. So Billy plays a guy named Bobby, and who I, runs a podcast. Who runs a uh-huh. podcast? <laughs> um, is shouty and full of opinions. Uh-huh. <laughs> um, and like, I'm his friend. We go to the club together. Uh, yeah, I mean, in the original script, I like represented the person who doesn't need to be in a relationship. Um, to be happy, uh, but that was mostly cut out. Because, Are you a slut in the movie? I mean, a little bit. Good for you. Yes. Um, yeah, and so I just come in and make some jokes and then leave. But it's a really great cast. Uh, T.S. Madison, who yes. um, is amazing. Uh, Miss Lawrence um, from Real Housewives of Atlanta and so many other things. Uh, is a really funny uh, actress named Eve Lindley, um, who she was on Dispatches from Nowhere with Jason Siegel, but she's so funny. Okay. Um, and like, yeah. Um, I don't Is it like J. Course. Rodriguez, Bowen J- Yang? Yes, like, you're doing, like, what's yes. Hollywood's in it? No, yeah. it's hundred percent like um J. Rodriguez is in it playing straight. Like what? No one who watches the movie realizes it's J. Rodriguez until you tell them. Um <laughs> Bowen is playing like truly batshit gay. Uh uh-huh. um, what's batshit gay? Just uh, out of control. Yes. Okay. Um Deborah Messing is in it. No, Christian she's not. Chenoweth. Yes. Really? Yes. Are you being serious? Absolutely. Kristen Chen with Anne Deborah Messing? Yes. Jesus. So this is just our Twitter oh. from the past 10 years yes. come to life. And Harvey Firestein is in it. Um, on my first day of work, Harvey Firestein, like, I, it's 4 o'clock in the morning, and I get, like, pulled towards a, a trailer, and then Harvey Firestein comes out, and I, like, immediately just let my heart explode with everything he's meant to me. Because you were coming? Is that what it was? Is that, was that... <laughs> yes. Um, it was very lovely, and then he was the loveliest, and then halfway through the day, um, there was a, a small man there, and uh, he just, Harvey just hit him and said, Mark, this is guy, you'll love him. And then that's how I knew Mark Shaman, uh... and it was the best. Was well, John and, Waters in the movie? John Waters was not in the movie. Mar- Mark Shaman did write a song for the movie, though. Oh, okay. Yes. Okay. That sounds amazing. And, like, uh, who else? Who's in it? Simone's in it Simone, from Drag Race? Simone's in it. Yeah. Um, you're you're really snagging all of the high quality I mean, names. This is that kind of show. I don't mess around. It, if I'm not in the movie, I look up who is so I could go. <laughs> Damn it! Why was I not in this movie? Oh, and and Luke McFarlane, mm-hmm. who is uh, the hot guy. Yes. Who Billy falls in love with? Is he really gay in real life? He's really gay in real I mean, life. Because everyone's in the everyone in the movie's gay, right? Yes. Everyone in the movie is LGBTQ plus, mm-hmm. except for like people were questioning because Deborah Messing and Christian Chenoweth, and I'm like, ladies with. Competitive show business awards are part of the plus, right. you know. Yes, they've had our back for a while. Yes, yeah. They- uh, um, but Luke it, like came out of the closet like really early, like 2008, like bef- back before uh, Perez was, you know, outed Neil Patrick Harris and oh all of my those God. guys. <laughs> like, um, but he came out super early, and he's like the good old days. Yes, God. and he's like super hot and super talented, but like. He, he really didn't get a lot of opportunities mm-hmm. because he was, he was gay. He, he was gay. But also the worst thing is, is that he's like, 
he's like the real version of who every gay guy pretended to be in 2005 mm. in, in that he's like ruggedly masculine and likes woodworking and that kind of thing. Yeah. And it is like, you're not real. One day he told us he goes to church and it's like. <laughs> like for real? Yes. For real church. Yes. Yeah. Sometimes my boyfriend and I pray over dinner. It's very sweet. Oh, that's lovely. I, do, I like it a lot. It's yeah. very cute. Um, but yeah, I feel like that is good because I didn't know he was actually really gay. And I was like, oh, great. Another queer baiter. No. Um, because if you just check TikTok lately, it's just everyone's just queer baiting. Yeah. I love the Gen Z children who mm -hmm. are pansexual and have never like touched another human being. That was at the Lady Gaga concert. Yes. I was there at the Lady Gaga concert looking around going, I am not fluid or non-binary enough to be here. <laughs> I felt like I was like out of the loop and I was like, no, you know what? I'm an Elder Gaga fan, okay? I have been there from day one when she was performing at Cherry Pop. <laughs> I've been there. <laughs> but also, like, truly, don't, like, don't throw the word cis at me. Uh, this is not conforming with any gender right I'll here. I'll throw S-I-S, -S, cis, at yes, you. Yes, absolutely. That's the absolutely. thing. I don't need the cis. I don't need the, like, oh, you're just... Oh. I have a question, and don't be offended, okay? Because yes. I am watching a show called Little Demon. Uh -huh. Were you in that? No, I was There's not. a guy, there's a character on, like, the second episode as the demon yeah. that, like, possesses somebody. And I was like, that's Guy. It's oh, totally really? Guy. And I Googled it. Uh-huh. And I guess somebody thought it was you as well and, like, scratched your name out. And uh -oh. I was like, oh, is this homophobic? Like, I just, like, went. It's such a cute show. But, like, they do an episode where Aubrey Plaza plays the mom. It's, uh -huh. it's a really funny animated show. Yeah. And, uh, like, she goes to school, her daughter's school, and just dealing with the kids today and just the shit that they're talking yes. about. She's like, I can't with any of you kids anymore because everything's like, why are you so toxic? Why are you? And I'm just like, I can't. Like, I, you know, I think so much of this stuff, it's so good that they're like more open to the world. Uh -huh. But I think with some of those rhetorical things, they're just using them to control situations instead of trying to learn and grow. Mm -hmm. And like... I love that everybody is finding and defining themselves, mm -hmm. but I also just don't need your rigid view of how these systems work to apply to me. Exactly. And is this addressed in the movie? <laughs> Do we have old gays versus young gays? Oh, 100%. 100%. Yeah. Like the, so one of the premises of the movie is that Billy's character is um, on the board that is putting together the first gay history museum. <clears throat> and it is sort of crazy that like we built this museum for a set, but there isn't something like this in the real world. Um, but the the board is composed of, you know, uh, trans people, bi people, mm -hmm. lesbians, and just sort of lots of different perspectives towards queer identity and just, uh, you know, ideas about discourse. Mm. That's going to be great. It is. I think it's gonna be awesome. I'm really proud of it. Yes, I. You should be. That's a good. It's a good thing, and and it's good to see you shine. You know. Thanks. Um, go check out Bros. Uh, September 30th. I'll be in the theater. Um, I will be sweeping up the popcorn after the movie. <laughs> no, but I'm I'm excited. It's gonna be a really fun one. But I want to talk about some more Bros. Okay. Um, Jonathan Bailey and Matt Bomer. Oh yes. God. I've seen the photos. Yes. They got wet and shirtless on a new... This is what I love about... This is Out from Out Magazine or Out.com, whatever yes. it is. New gay show set. <laughs> Just a new gay show. Um, this is the Boys in the Bridgerton, which I'm all about. Jonathan Bailey and Matt Bomer are filming Showtime's upcoming romance series, Fellow Travelers. I love this. I just want I just want this as like my screensaver. Um, yeah. Matt Bomer is made out of molded plastic. He I don't, really is. I don't have a problem with it. Where like to me, like Matt Bomer is perfect, but like Jonathan Bailey is like so much sexier to me. Ugh. But also I saw him in company and there's no, like truly good musical theater really can make someone look hot. Wow, the more you know. Yes. Like if they can sing, if they sing well, it makes them hotter. Well, it, there's just like the charisma of like 3,000 people staring at you and if they're really selling it. But also not so much in company, but in other things, they have dancer ass a lot of the time. Yeah, or like a like a hot rock and roll drummer. Yeah. Like you're attracted to the drummer. You're yeah. like, oh, okay, all right, yes. it's hot. But I'm here for this. I like, that's why this was the segue from bros. I think we're getting more gay-led um, films. Um, and 
shows. It's nice, and there's also more space for sexuality in it, where it used to be like, oh no, men might get uncomfortable. Um, I'm all about it. I've said on this podcast, I love objectifying straight men. Yes. It's one of my favorite pastimes. But also- Jenga and objectifying straight men. But we should also be able to objectify gay guys without straight guys getting sort of like upset or worried that their television show is not going to be um, as good. Well, that's but the I hate, thing. I do, I do dislike that gay guys have to be prestige. What do you mean? Like we're only- well, I, that's not true. I, w- I would say like most things like uh, the Jonathan Bailey, Matt Bomer show, it feels like gays show up in sort of like uh, premium cable and like good uh, streaming stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, but like I also want there to be space for like trashy jokes. Oh, um, I see what I you're saying. We don't really have TV that is trashy jokes anymore. Right. You want it. You want you're saying that like everything's just dainty. They all have like a nice apartment. They're yeah. all like they, yeah. no one farts in their bed. I mean, I don't necessarily need to see that. Um, but I would love to see that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would feel seen. <laughs> Finally, like someone's snoring, you know, like, oh, okay. Yes. You know, I mean, a, a little bit of balance for that. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, um, are there gays in Chuck Lorre's, am- or Chuck Lorre's television? I don't know. No. Well, they're caricatures. Yes. They have scarves around their necks still. Yes. Yeah. Still. <laughs> Just a, uh, my <laughs> wife, am I right? Uh. <laughs> oh, God. Well, I, I, there's a lot of gay news. I'm excited. You know, I, I think leading with the queen was great, yes. you know, because we've got all these queens in this episode. Ricky Martin. Yes. We did you hear? Rico. Did you hear about that? Like his nephew, like saying that he was like molested and all that stuff? Yes. And it's so hard because... Like we need to believe victims and all of that, mm-hmm. but it's also like there are also 100% manipulative family members who are just like you're not giving me any money. Maybe I'll take advantage of historical presumptions that all gay men are pedophiles to get right. some money out of you. Right. But also, who wouldn't want it from Ricky Martin? My you know? God, I would be like, <laughs> shut up and just do me. I, I, I hate being that person, but I mean, my God. Yes, I mean. What a handsome, big ass man! Like um, he's he's given us so much for so long. Um, I'm sorry that he's going through this because I I want him to be the first gay pop star governor of Puerto Rico. Oh my God! Do you remember when they were having those protests and he was like out on top of the truck waving a gigantic Puerto Rican flag? What was the protest? Or was that a hurricane? Oh. I think they were pissed off at they were going bankrupt were pi- and they yes. were pissed off at their governor. Yes, Maybe. and then the hurricane happened and everyone yes. yes, they were mad. Yes. Yes, and he was on top of like a tank or something with yes. his like like Puerto Rican flag just waving. It was amazing. Ugh God. But also you never know what goes on in those situations. We all thought Woody Allen was the best. <laughs> Did we? <laughs> I mean, it is sort of when people are like it's just so hard. I love Manhattan so much. And it's like, Manhattan is about him fucking a 16-year-old. Yeah, exactly. But this is what I even predicted. I said he's going to be cleared, and he's going to go back, and he's going to get some gay revenge, and that's what he's doing. Ricky Martin says he's been persecuted, besieged, harassed, stalked, and extorted by a maladjusted person, a.k.a. his nephew. 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 And he's now suing the guy who made wild accusations against him. Uh, Martin filed a lawsuit Wednesday in San Juan against Dennis Adiel Sanchez, who was the, who the singer claims he's trying to assassinate his reputation. Uh, yeah, they said they had a seventh long, seven month long relationship, and he's suing this little shit for twenty million dollars, which I think is a little excessive. But how fabulous! I mean, do you think his nephew has twenty million dollars laying around? He's like, I'll show you. I'm gonna squash you like the bug you are. I mean, I do like when people get slandered and have the money to be able to say, like, no, you you did that bad thing to me. But also, that is a good point. You're like kind of the richest, happiest person in Puerto Rico. <laughs> Go back to being that some more. Yeah, I just, I mean, my God. Ricky says the messages that this nephew said were clearly written by a maladjusted individual. Yeah, ruined. Just, that's what I think. If you're going to try and ruin my career that I've had before you were even born, yeah. and they're all just lies, and it gets cleared, ruin this little shit. Go for it. It's also, I do not want to be the sensible person on a podcast. Please don't make me be Robin Quivers. <laughs> Guy Branham, congratulations. You were the Robin Quivers. <laughs> oh, I, was, I forget what I was going to say. I've been up for so long. No, 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 no. Uh, but I just like, 
I mean, it is, it's clearly not the seven year old or whatever who is no. um, uh, making all of this happen. He's There's clearly somebody being bigger pushing. Used by people. Yeah. Um, and I generally like manipulative people who are trying to steal money from someone rich. It like it's good on a TV show. I mean, it's happening like al- like every day. Yeah, but when you come after Ricky Martin, it hurts me. That's what I'm saying. Then you're like getting into my family, yes. and that's when I have a problem because we're like all of God in the gay community. When we're here, we're family. <laughs> <laughs> We're here, we're queer, we're family. That's that's the Olive Garden. <laughs> that's very funny. Um, but uh, this was interesting to me. The Zac Efron thing revealed that his 2021 face transformation was the result of a shattered jaw after he smashed his chin on a granite fountain and sparked plastic surgery rumors. Did you remember this? No, I didn't remember that that happened. I saw a story recently about how he was talking about having an eating disorder and what? and some sort of body dysmorphia issues when he got super snatched for Baywatch. And that made me sad. Well, but yeah. I'm now I'm worried that he's going to be one of those people who gets so worried about what he looks like, what he looks like that they truly fuck themselves up when they still would have been fine in forty. He's a man; he'll yeah. be fine. Yeah. Well, that's what happened because like pictures came out where he just looked very. I don't want to like cartoonish, like his jaw was really big, kind of almost like American Dad. Yeah. And just very like filler and jaw and everyone was like oh my god what does Zac Efron do I could even imagine what that would do like it was trending of course it was like oh my god Zac Efron not my high school musical you know Uh, but that's what he's saying he's now addressed it this is the first time he's addressed it he said I hit uh, the corner of a fountain passed out and woke up to his chin bone wait for it hanging off his face that doesn't feel real he claims his facial muscles got really, really big to compensate for the injury. Ah. Uh, okay. <laughs> you caught that. Um, and he worked with a physical therapist in an attempt to uh, counteract their growth. He then tells how when he took a break in Australia, his masseter muscles grew. Fans noticed something looked different about the star in April 21, sparking rumors he decided to go under the knife. Okay. You know how we have national parks? Yeah. I think it may be incumbent upon the president to nationalize our hot people. Mm -hmm. Like, left to their own devices, they're going to fuck themselves up with injectables and, you know, non-quality plastic surgery. And I think if we just go in and we say the government owns you, we're going to keep you hot as long as we can. Yeah. So people have hot people to look up to. Preserve. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's an important and pressing national interest. Yeah, but I mean, like, we haven't had, like, a good botched story in a while i mean we've had those two weird swedish gay twins yeah those are weird those two guys and then we have jocelyn wildenstein is it wildenstein i think so the cat lady yes so i mean this was very much that like when you saw pictures but also here's the thing i'm just kind of like go away heal yeah take your time no absolutely we all know what you look like like yeah i don't understand why you'd be like hi i'm at this premiere looking like this and also like after a a year Mm. and a half we'll sort of believe any kind of change you know Mm -hmm. but he's so hot i actually like over a decade ago um i was out on a it was a very strange evening but i ended up um in uh an suv with this basically the story is just i didn't realize i was with zach efron because he had just gotten really ripped to play um dude in the military for something back in 2010, but there's nothing like realizing someone is a hotter version of a celebrity. Yeah. Oh, you're Zac Efron, but you got guns? It's like, what's his name? Um, uh, what's Who? his name? I'm forgetting his name. Uh, from uh, He's a comedian. The, the um, uh, He's an Indian comic. Kum- Kumail. Oh, Kumail, yes. For Eternals, huge. Yes. No. We were I, all like, what? Yes. <laughs> I was like, wait a minute. That's so w- Well, that's weird because it's like, oh, you've you've taken my friend and turned- <laughs> What have you done? <laughs> turned him into hot meat? What I am know. I supposed to do? See, I wonder that sometimes too. I'm like, if I had like the right celebrity trainer, yeah. like if I had like some military movie, yes. active duty- I mean, but Justin, this is this is the the comedy club that HGH built, isn't it? I mean, he you, like you. This is the home of of uh, muscly comedians. Is it? I mean, sort of. Who? I mean, all of them are in Austin now. <laughs> um, I mean, 
Well, the majority of them, yeah. yes. Yeah, they all were just like, you know what? We're going to saddle up and yeah. head out. Go to where there's no state income tax. <laughs> yeah. We don't have time for these skinny pussy boys. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, well, that's what that's what the joy of straight people are, yes. you know. And this, we we've had enough gay stories. We have a couple more left. Okay. But I wanted to get into this one. I don't really like talking about this next group of people uh. because a these people love denying plastic surgery, even though we all have human eyeballs. <laughs> uh, the Kardashians. Okay. Ray J from the sex tape. I don't know if you saw the story because I don't know if it it got up. Beyond the Wall of Toronto. I did not see it. Ray J just claimed that Kris Jenner watched multiple different sex tapes of him and Kim and chose which one to release to the public. Now, the reason this is all happening, because while you were at TIFF, Chris and who's the uh, who's the munchkin one? Um, oh, Kendall? Kylie? Kylie, yes. <laughs> the, the one. the Yes, the billionaire munchkin. Got on... Uh, I think it was James Corbin. They were like, took a lie detector test because that's uh -huh. where we're at in late night. And he asked her, like, did you release the sex tape? And she said no. And the YouTube uh, lie detector guy was like, she's telling the truth when we all were like, okay. Yeah. You're not going to be like, no, she's lying on national yeah. television. So Ray J got all crazy and went on Instagram live or whatever and had all these receipts with like him and Kanye and all this stuff. Now... This is why, because Kim breaks down on the Kardashians on Hulu, and she's like, oh my God, they're saying there's a second tape, and there's not, and all this stuff. And now, now we're at a point where I'm shook, because I'm like, holy God, I couldn't even imagine like A, making a sex tape, B, your mom finding it, and then C, releasing it. And then there's D, like, no, go back, and we need to like do some scene work again. Here's the thing. I think Kris Jenner leaked this story herself. Like, I think there's no way she actually, actually did that. I don't think she was smart enough to do that back mm -hmm. in 2006 or whenever it was. Yeah, it's like, yeah, something like that. Um, but like, what a truly baller move if she did. Like, truly, the notion of just like media sculpting the whole world, watching your daughter get yeah, plowed. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. I mean, God save the queen, you know? <laughs> it's like that's I mean that's that's the thing, because it's like it's what in the gypsy rose lee hell? Like I mean, it's astounding. Yeah. Like, um, and she she did it so well. Like they are the most famous people in the world for truly no reason. Well, for sex tapes. Yes, for sex tapes. But it is funny how and it marrying is marrying basketball players who die horribly. That's true, too. And then going back to the ones that treat them terribly yes. for storylines. And then there was a tweet saying something about, like, I wouldn't be surprised if Chris was if, if Chris Jenner was the one telling uh, Tristan to cheat on Chloe, which wouldn't surprise me. Yeah. I see Chris Jenner in this big tower with lightning coming out from her fingertips and just cackling at the wind a la King Lear. I mean, it is so <laughs> funny. Like, what does she want? What is her long-term goal? What is she trying to achieve? If it's just money, I get that, but you would think that she would want, I mean, does she think this is providing stability to her family if everyone in her family gets to be famous? I don't know. Does she, yeah. It is very strange because I remember uh, watching the same episode of James Corden. He was like, uh, uh, Kylie had her baby and they named it Wolf or something. And he was like, so what's the baby's name yet? And she, you would have thought that it was like a secret project we can't talk about. Like it's in production. We can't really like give away the details. They're like, is it a human baby name? And she's like, yes. <laughs> and I'm just like, oh my God, like, oh, uh, the suspense. I mean, it is so lovely <laughs> that they have been able to, um, turn those four to six Calabasas homes into, <laughs> you know, a, a movie studio. Tyler Perry presents yeah. Calabasas. It's the new Atlanta. God, it's so insane. Uh, Do, but I, so you think you don't. Non-union writers. <laughs> well, yeah, of course. But you, so you don't think she, and that's the thing. I don't think she's smart enough to know about lighting and editing. Well, and I, and <laughs> I just think back then she didn't, like maybe, Maybe she did, but I don't think back then she understood being CEO of Five Daughters yeah. could be a huge industry. I mean, I think they were like, 
just rich they were just rich people in Los Angeles. Um, you know, I mean, that girl was organizing Paris Hilton's closet. That's we forget. Um, yeah, if if Chris truly was, I would be stunned. I mean, that's the thing. I'm just waiting for the kids. Mark my words. We're going to have uh, Kardashians, the next generation on the Freeform Network. Uh, yeah. They're going to be like the young kids and she's and she's going to be Nana Kardashian. Yeah, splitting off the young ones. Uh-huh. I mean, the way that Chloe and Courtney used to take Miami, like it'll be oh, Chloe right. and Courtney take nine of the grandchildren. Yeah, we all go to Aspen and go grocery shopping to see what it's like being poor. <laughs> did you see that? They actually no. did that. I just watched the clips. I don't watch the show. I can't. But like they did that. They went to like a Ralph's and they were like, "How do you push the cart?" I'm oh, like, "Okay, that's I'm so dumb. I'm get out of here." Yes. Um, I think we have time for one more story. I know you're exhausted. Let's go to the. This one I think is kind of gay enough. It's not, it's, well, yeah, we'll do the squirrel. We'll do the squirrel. We're going to end with the squirrel because this heat wave was pretty awful. And I didn't know this was a term. It just makes me laugh. It's called splooting. Uh, Splooting, S-P-L-O-O-T-I-N-G. It's too big for Wordle. But uh, maybe sploot could do it, I guess. But the temperatures in California have been so awful Uh that it's making it very uncomfortable for people living in the state, especially squirrels. Um, And this squirrel, people have been concerned because the squirrels around town have been full on spreading their squissies um, (laughs) out. Have you seen this at all? I have not seen this at all. Okay, well, if you don't know what, uh, 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 what is this called, spooling? Wait, splooting, splooting is, a few weeks ago, photos of squirrels lying flat on their bellies in California caught the Internet's attention. Uh, they're just laying flat down, stretched on the ground on their bellies, where people can survive through the dangerous heat wave in their air-conditioned homes. The local squirrels in the area can only sploot to make themselves cool surviving in the heat. Um, and they've been worried. They're like, is this monkeypox? Is this... <laughs> Is this a new virus happening? Are they going to turn into zombies? What's happening? So. I have I have nothing res- but respect for the splooter community. Yeah, I love. Uh, yeah, you're a yeah, sploot ally. I'm a sploot ally. Good. You know, I've dated guys who are into splooting. Really, but it was not really my thing. Yeah, um, but I would say we need to thank God for splooting because if um, if squirrels didn't have it to cool off, they would have to start building air conditioners. And once squirrels can build air conditioners and other mechanical projects, we no longer dominate this planet. Yeah, you know? that's when squirrels and cockroaches like figure it out. And that's, yeah. again, like what you were saying, like that's a good grinder like profile where uh-huh. it's like doors unlocked, splooting, <laughs> come on in. I mean, it really is. Ass out, sploot, please. Yeah. Like um, and mean, for the straight women who listen to this podcast, that's, Pretty much what Grinder is. It's a sex app. Your husbands are on it. It's fine. <laughs> so, I, yes, I'm glad we can end with the the splooting that's happening. So, if you see a squirrel splooting, just walk by and go, "Come on, squirrel!" And uh, Dustin, I feel thoroughly splooted by this entire podcasting experience in a good way. Because yes. splooting, splooting's where it's at. Yeah, I love you so much, guy. I love you so much. Thank you for having me. What else? Do you have anything else going on besides Bros? Um, um, I am working on Hacks, season three of Hacks, right good. now. So I hope that when I get home, I find out that season two won an Emmy. Oh, right. Um, yes, the Emmys are on tonight. Yeah. And oh, and I have a show called Platonic that's coming out next spring. Fantastic. With Seth Rogen and Rose Byrne. Fantastic, bud. Yes. And make sure to check out Bros in Theater September 30th and get uh, Guy's book, uh, My Life as a Goddess, wherever Thank you get your books if you read. Thank anymore. you so much. Yeah, of course. And make sure to follow him on Instagram and Twitter and all your socials. And thank you guys for listening. Make sure to like and subscribe and review. We love it when you review. And I have another episode that's going to be fantastic next week. Thanks again for listening on Just Same with Justin Mardell. See you later. Bye.